हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम यू ऑल टू शून्य आई एस होप योर प्रिपरेशन इज गोइंग रियली वेल सो आर टूडे इज टॉपिक फॉर मेन्स आर्टिकल डिस्कशन इज शंघाई कॉपरेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दिस टॉपिक इज एक्चुअली वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर द एग्जामिनेशन ऑफ मेन्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर एज वेल एज फॉर द प्रिलिम्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर रीजन बींग इंडिया हैज बीन प्रोसाइडिंग ओवर एस सी ओ दिस ईयर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री the 23rd summit has been concluded we will look into the outcomes how india and seo relations are impacting the growth trajectory of india and creating a change the ripples into the global world order one of the major development for examination is that recently iran joined as the ninth member of the seo belarus is also into the process so do remember it and for the very first time india has been presiding over the seo its presidency is on the rotational basis okay so this topic is going to be very important for the examination and i hope you keep a track by making a written notes from the class and after that you will get the pdf of it also so let's start first we will understand the context of it into the mains article whenever we are writing something the introduction part basically how to generate the context in which context we are going to put in the news so the context starts from india to be the chair so here students focus on the thing that india has been the chair of seo first of all india china and us you have to understand in the global world order politics you have to understand certain things that india and china when whenever we are talking about seo SU is China owned China led organization it was started back in 2001 after the disintegration of USSR this organization started basically why this SU was formed because China wants to create its inroads into central asian region China wants to create its inroads into central asian region Russia plus central asian region is called as the energy basket okay it is called as the energy basket therefore slowly china was making incursions in roads connectivity building connectivity projects later on the culmination was found in the form of bri belt and road initiative this year also in the 23rd summit 2023 when india was the chair it refused to join the bri why did india refuse to join the bri on the pretext that bri is passing through Pakistan occupied Kashmir and it is threat to the Indian sovereignty therefore India will never join BRI in this scenario if we are going to build connectivity lines through the POK therefore India refused this is one of the key outcomes of here therefore you will find that China and India sitting on the same table where the major project by the China India is not signing India is refusing to sign okay so we'll look more into it what are the things in this context when india is chair whenever you are president you are presiding over certain organization you have to understand the global world order also right now the world is polarized world order is polarized because of two major things when this meeting was happened that time the crucial problem was russia ukraine crisis russia ukraine conflict because of russia ukraine conflict because you know steppies are grown into the ukraine three crucial problems emerged first was food problem of food security global food security even you have seen that what has happened the minimum import price of certain commodities have been fixed by government of india food crops i am talking about food 3f problem of 3f food fertilizer and fuel food fertilizer and fuel fuel you understand from russia whole europe whole europe on one hand they are condemning the act of russia but they are not ready to shut down the nord gas pipeline you getting this point so whole world is polarized in these circumstances which side you would be taking on okay understand what i want to say is here that in the russia ukraine conflict the russia and china are together on one hand whereas us and european union they are condemning this act russia being a permanent member how can it invade a country which was previously also part of ussr 
so what is happening it is creating a trust deficit hence how does india take this position in this polarized world order energy dilemma and energy security energy dilemma and energy security as i have already told you basically central asian region where we are talking about kazakhstan lot of uranium deposits are there okay so mineral deposits okay are there so what happens whenever you are linking it with the projects developmental projects developmental projects then what you will find that for india growth when we are shifting towards renewable energy we need certain minerals from these countries okay so we want to have a shared bond with them then only in the future times coming future if we want to fulfill our energy security we want to diversify our energy basket at that time because they are in our extended neighborhood because they are in our extended neighborhood not just we have to focus on the neighborhood policy but extended neighborhood also we should maintain very good relations therefore for the energy dilemma to resolve the energy politics and secure energy diplomacy just like india is doing into space diplomacy to its sark satellite similarly here energy diplomacy into the central asian region this su being the chair of su is very very important so from different perspectives the question could be asked into the examination and then you have to understand that how india is going to understand the present presidency in this changing world order right now in the g20 communique two major events that happened uh, for india is one being the chair of su another being the uh, presiding of g20 G20 also presided by India. We'll talk about it. What had been the G20 outcomes? Okay, BRICS also will be talking about. So this isn't an era of war. What our Prime Minister said that this isn't an era of war, but is is an era of three Ds. It is an era of three Ds. Three Ds are democracy, diplomacy, and dialogue. Democracy, diplomacy, and dialogue. to that we should be able to resolve most of the problems and the declaration what we are talking about the new delhi declaration that concluded after a virtual summit 23rd virtual summit of the seo it talked about formation of more representative more representative and multipolar world order more representative and multipolar world order you will find these words very fascinating i'll, I'll tell you uh, try to understand one thing multipolar when we will be exploring certain things like strategic significance of su i'll explain you what do we mean by multi alignment now india is shifting from non alignment towards multi alignment this is a major change in our foreign policy diplomacy okay so let's go ahead and understand the shanghai cooperation organization and its formation so su is basically china owned and china led organization china owned and china led organization which was formed in 2001 and seo charter was signed in 2002 seo charter was signed in 2002 china owned china led initiative members include china russia india pakistan central asian republics except turkmenistan basically Turk turkmenistan you must remember this as an exception because turkmenistan follows principle of neutrality military neutrality therefore it is not member of this seo organization and in the global world order you will find that whenever we will be talking about an organization will whenever we will be talking about a grouping then we must also talk about what number of people it represent what is the size of gdp it represent okay global global population it is representing total 40% of the global population huge numbers just 10% less than the 50% of global population seo is representing global gdp 25% one fourth of global gdp is represented by seo 
and world's total land area 22 percent land area is less comparatively you can see population is more and it is representing global gdp of 25 percent and also understand that when india was admitted as the full member of seo recently we have seen that iran has been admitted as the ninth member now when india was admitted India was admitted in 2017, Astana Summit, as the full member of SCO. So, what we will remember that basic fact, sometimes you have to, in the main answer writing also, with analytics, we have to present certain facts about the organization. A question can de definitely come in your examination that what are the objectives of SCO and how the strategic position of India is relevant for achieving its foreign policy goals, foreign policy outcomes. With respect to different things, this question can be asked to you. So, we have to mention at least when the India was part of it, when India became part of it and what are the formation, what is the formation type of this organization. Now, let's look at the objectives of the organization. What are the objectives? Okay. Relationship strengthening among members. But here I'll give you a sarcasm, okay? The sarcasm is that when we look at, you know, Russia, China, India, Pakistan, what is the difficulty? The difficulty is that whenever, whenever India is coming close to Pakistan, Whenever India is coming close to Pakistan, China is ready to support Pakistan to give arms and ammunition for cross-border terrorism. That is a problem for us. Whenever India is coming close to Russia, again China is there. You are getting this point. Moreover, China and India, whenever you know peace deals are happening over there, they are, they, Pakistan is getting ready to support China to let its BRI pass through Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. So, how we can actually strengthen the relationship among its members but yes whenever a problem is there through three d's we have found our solution through three d's democracy diplomacy and dialogue by sitting on the table we'll be talking about all the issues and we can resolve them and therefore when the conflict is more emergent more deeper then we need to solve this problem with more diplomacy deepening political and political security and economic cooperation here we also have an organization called as RATS, Regional Anti-Terrorist Squad, basically. Okay. RATS mechanism, we call it RATS mechanism. Its headquarters is in Tashkent. HQ is in Tashkent. One more fact, students, that where is the headquarter of SEO located? Headquarter of SEO is located in Beijing. In Beijing. Remember this. Not in Shanghai, but in Beijing. Already a question has been asked in UPSC prelims as fact in 2016 prelims. RATS, the objective of RATS, regional anti-terrorism, try to understand the problem of, among these countries, if I am talking, the crucial problem is of cross-border terrorism, trust deficit. Therefore, security is a prime concern. And hence, that objective of RATS is TES. To solve the problem of TES, you can remember it as TES. Problem of terrorism, problem of extremism and problem of separatism. Terrorism, extremism and separatism. These three problems we have to solve through RATS. This mechanism has been there. Democratic and equitable international political order. You know, democratic and political, uh, political order, that is a very good thing that we are talking about but we are talking these things with respect to the communist led government into the china where functional democracy is not there we are talking about it to a country in russia okay so somewhere they have a tilt towards autocratic countries therefore this kind of dialogue is necessary democratic and equitable international political order Recently, Varanasi has been, you know, political order we are talking about, Varanasi has been declared as the cultural capital of SEO. Varanasi has been declared as the cultural capital of SEO. Cultural capital of SEO. Regional peace and security. Again, this, this is coming as regional peace and security. Uh, uh, try to understand one important point here also into this objectives. I'll be explaining it that what is the role of India 
India is, uh, you know, geographically positioned in such a manner that they are into our neighborhood and extended neighborhood. Central Asian region is an extended neighborhood. China and Pakistan in our neighborhood exactly. So we want to resolve all the regional problems sitting on the same table. Therefore, this grouping gives a pivotal role for India to resolve its matters over there. Simultaneously, if I compare, you understood the geographical position I am talking to you? Uh, like extended neighborhood and neighborhood, we are geographically near to them. Therefore, we want to resolve these problems. But politically, holding our liberal democratic principles, we are very much near to European. We are very much near to the American principles of democracy, liberal democracy. Therefore, we have certain groupings with them also. India's difficult dilemma, India's difficult position is to create a bridge between both of them. To be part of both of the groupings that we will real realize later on. Identifying new areas, confidence building efforts in Asia. See, these things are something like these key terms you must be uh, like preparing with for your answer writing in the examination, like confidence building efforts in Asia, different projects that they are taking place, collective responsibility approach, whether it be the time of COVID, whether it be the time of terrorism, any attack is happening, then there should be a collective responsibility to approach that problem. Expanding cooperation in communication and information sharing. This is the arena where India is evolving. Okay, India has been the largest exporter, number one exporter of information technology services in the world. Information technology innovation in the world. India's ranking is one over there. So, information technology has been the area. Now, we want to have people-to-people -people ties. People-to-people -people connect, like Varanasi has been declared as the cultural capital. So, people will understand, people in the regional sphere, people will connect more. Information technology is one such sphere. Identifying areas of priority. What are the areas of priority? With respect to different neighborhood countries, we will be dealing into the priority areas. Just understand what happens when you are a part of one grouping. Then on the sidelines, bilateral talks can be initiated very easily. If I take the clear case of India versus Pakistan, we have so much problems, skirmishes at the border. We have different kinds of issues. Bilateral talks initiating by the India and Pakistan becomes difficult. But if you both are member of a common organization, then on the same table, bilateral talks can be initiated and it can be resolved. So identifying priority areas with China can also be one objective in the Arunachal Pradesh, resolving Doklam issue. Okay, Pangyong Lake. Use of newly developed technology in disaster resilience and capacity building. Basically, it is talking about the technology transfer into the areas that we can definitely identify. This point is very important. Strategic significance. What is the strategic significance of India and SEO? So, understand it is a non-west grouping so regional interest whatever are the regional interest of this area will be reflected for that you will find one challenge one criticism also okay for example nato is organization okay led by us nato similarly su is being touted as su shanghai corporation organization is being touted as eastern nato eastern nato how US is observing, European Union is observing SEO as non-Western grouping. No Western country is there. Therefore, it is an Eastern NATO. Okay, strategic significance we are talking here. So, strategic importance is that no Western hegemony is involved into the talks of these group, into the declarations of this group, into the policy making of this group. Multi-alignment foreign policy. Students, this is very important. Here, I want your attention a little bit. Multi-alignment foreign policy. When the world was bipolar, during the after the fall of USSR, world was bipolar. Post-Second World War, you will see that. What happened that when world was bipolar, you will find that India followed the policy of NAM. When the world was bipolar, India followed the policy of non-alignment movement. 
now because of the waves of globalization world order has changed it has evolved okay and world order is now no more bipolar it is multipolar multipolar because of that now our foreign policy the word coined by sashi tharoor is called as multi alignment from non alignment to multi alignment from non alignment to multi alignment you are getting this point hence the strategic importance for india being a part of the seo is about its multi alignment its multi engagement with different groupings okay hence this multi alignment foreign policy community empowerment efforts different efforts are being taken for the community empowerment okay eurasian political and economic grouping yes it, it this grouping for example right now iran is also a part of it if india wants to be you know finding its own inroads into central asian region there are two ways okay either chabar port or bandar abbas port therefore it is an eurasian political and economic grouping just in the extended neighborhood of su therefore india has it holds an strategic importance for india as well p2 members china and russia are the permanent two members of the unsc they have veto power so a grouping which has two permanent members already into it then this grouping if it takes any decisions it's important not just for india but for the whole global order therefore we want to raise our voice we want to present our reservations we want to direct we want to be a part of the vision of that grouping hence this has that strategic importance okay strategic military collaboration through rats now students also understand the geographical positioning if we talk about internal security you know india is located exactly between the golden crescent okay the golden crescent and this kind of drug trafficking fci and fake notes when these things are happening then what happens this this problem can be very deep and it resolving them requires certain collaborated efforts from different countries it cannot be resolved by only one country through its own efforts hence this organization for terrorism for fake currency transfers for trafficking of human beings we need this organization here military collaboration can also help okay but i will just make it very clear to you that military collaboration we can have joint exercises military exercises but understand whenever a question is coming to you never write that it is seo is not a military collaboration in its objectives it is very clearly understood that it is not a military collaboration it has a mechanism called as rats mechanism through which we solve certain problems regional problems okay economy and energy direction this point because powerful economic countries and lot of scope for trade is there economic countries are there china the rise of china you have seen although it is through the debt trap diplomacy and it is economically more a threat to us than russia right now so the the currency war the trade war that we have seen between us and china that is happening so for that matter any kind of connectivity for example let's understand one thing if china is making its bri belt and road initiative a workable proposition then what happens that through these markets because it is linked to different kinds of markets so india can also utilize the bri in the coming future right now we have refused to be part of bri but in the coming future in the international relations there is there are no permanent friends no permanent enemies so but we should have that bond we should be able to fill that trust deficit tomorrow when we want to utilize those roads moreover these bri initiatives this connectivity initiatives that are being taken by the uh, china that will also be helpful in taking the raw materials from those areas okay so it will ultimately it is going to seo is going to improve the regional connectivity of that area overall the region has input goods called as strategic materials input goods okay with vast market 
and landlocked countries. These countries are landlocked. So, how do we get that connectivity? With the help of BRI, with the help of Chabar port, with the help of Bandar Abbas port, INSTC. Ashkbath Agreement. Okay. International North-South Transit Corridor that we are building. From that also connectivity will come. Although we understand that China is not a part of it. But you are understanding, India is part of both of them. So this is good and it will reduce the dependency. Try to understand, it will reduce the dependency on any particular country for the raw materials. If India is having a good relations with the CAR, India's main objective, try to understand what I want to say, strategic importance, is to resolve the problems, political problems, border issues, geographical problems with specifically China and Pakistan by having bilateral talks along with the SEO. As well as making its inroads into energy rich region of Central Asian countries. You are getting this point? And that's, that's the strategic importance of it. Now, India and SEO, let's understand. India has been uniquely positioned. How India has been uniquely positioned? Now, let's understand that. You will, you, you will get to understand that, you know, for example, If I explain you like, you know, this is India, okay, this is India. India is also a member of Quad. India is also a member of SCO. Okay, this Quad is led by US. This SCO is led by China. India is also a member of Indo-Pacific Economic Forum. Just understand, India's strategic position with respect to SEO. India is also a member of Indo-Pacific Economic Forum, trade grouping. Okay. And in, India is also a member of Eastern Economic Forum. Eastern Economic Forum. Okay. Now, what about how India, if, if you'll find that, if I talk about another aspect, if I talk about Iran and Saudi Arabia. India is having bilateral talks with these countries. I2U2 initiative also with US you have seen. Although right now, we are seeing that right now, the Abraham Accords have failed. There is a drastic situation. Okay, in, into the Israel-Palestine issue, what we are looking at, we'll co cover that also into the lecture. But here you are understanding. What is the problem? What India strategic significance for India is that? On one hand, we have autocratic countries. Whether it be Russia, whether it be China, to some extent we can call it Pakistan also. Okay, imbalanced countries. On the other hand, here we have US. Okay, or we can call it democratic countries. Western world order, Western poli politics, Eastern politics, and India has to act as a bridge between both of them. This is the strategic position for India. India has to act as a bridge. And how India will act as a bridge? How India will act as a bridge? This is the question. India uniquely positioned. You understand, geographically, we are no more close to the SEO. But with our liberal democratic principles, we are more close with the US or EU or Western world. How India is going to balance them? How India is going to bridge this gap? How India is going to, you know, uh, bridge the gap between the two camps of the world order right now? In the multipolar world order also, we are finding these two camps. For that, we need... Collaboration with coalition of democracy and coalition of. For that, we need collaboration with coalition of democracy and coalition of common goals. These common goals has to be aligned and bridge between democratic countries and autocratic countries has to be created. This is very, very important. Now, let's look at the challenges.
first point is russia china deepening relations now you understand because of ukraine russia conflict the thing that has happened as russia and china have p2 p2 members have come close p2 nexus is forming somewhere p2 nexus is forming we all know that china has supported unequivocally to the russia both are communist countries so somewhere you know what what is the strategic position of india to counter china you know to counter china in our neighborhood we need to to balance the china we need support of russia you getting my point to balance china to balance china india needs support of russia but what is happening because of these things the into the seo also china and russia are coming closer this is a cause of concern for india and it is being touted that a new nato a new quad what we call a new quad will will be formed new quad in this what members can be there into this new quad russia china pakistan and iran could be the members and this will be a cause of concern for us india is already a member of quad with us japan australia you are getting this point so if this new quad emerges with a different name then it will be concern for us if these two p2 members are coming closer and forming a nexus okay second point is that it is chinese quad what i had been talking to you it is chinese quad basically third point is china's interest versus india's interest as it is china owned and china led organization okay so going to the table china has certain hegemony vested interest to promote its own policies against india's policies into this emerging global world order china want to present itself as the leader of south asia southeast asia therefore to challenge the stature of india china will try all its you know tools and techniques of arm to twisting this could be a challenge for us to handle okay asian nato by S seo by west try to understand this point asian nato what happens that west as i told you west calls seo western countries let's take example of us us calls us says that seo is an asian not nato eastern nato you can say or asian nato you can say whereas whereas they say the seo or china say eastern country say china says that no 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 quad what you have already formed quad is an asian nato led by us china says that quad is an asian nato led by us thoda sa samajh mein aa raha hai you are understanding little bit of about it what is happening this is called as blame game in international politics both of them are trying to label the organization okay or tag the organization by giving it a different meaning using different euphemisms okay whereas functionality is entirely different whether it be quad or whether it be seo but this is a challenge and the bigger challenge particularly for india is you are in which team right now trust deficit here you are observing russia china deepening relations here i had been telling you that these two members are coming closer but here also one per permanent or structural flaw is that you know russia is fearful russia for the russia also it is fearful that if china is able to uh, get successful into the bri project then the rise of china will be there therefore there is a trust deficit between russia and china itself moreover because of russia's invasion towards ukraine the countries which were previously members of ussr who got independence after the disintegration of ussr they are fearful that if russia occupies ukraine tomorrow it may attack belarus also tomorrow it may attack different countries also so there is a growing trust deficit into the central asian region with respect to the countries because russia is being backed by china also so there is growing trust deficit into the region lack of connectivity tapi gas pipeline you know not able to get succeed because of pakistan so what what we are talking about the connectivity it is a challenge for us 
lack of proper connectivity india has criticized pakistan for not giving transit route to india air transit route also we are talking about connectivity for india into this region into this particular region and you know dependable resilient connectivity if i'm talking about sustainable connectivity if i'm talking about that will not be blocked then it is through chabar and bandar abbas port only chabar and bandar abbas port ports so these had been the challenges let's look at the way forward this doctrine was given by our prime minister in Quan Quandigo summit SCO 2018. The doctrine called as secure doctrine. We know that we Indians are very good at making acronyms. Different government schemes are also coming with different names of acronyms. So it will also help you understand. Okay, secure doctrine, secure. S E C U R E. Okay. S means security. It focuses upon regional security. We have elaborated upon it that whether it be golden crescent or cross border terrorism or mass trafficking of human beings, we need peace and security. Economic cooperation into different areas. Our focus is upon economic co cooperation into different areas. Connectivity, whether it be through BRI, it's okay, but India don't want to be part of it. We want regional connectivity into the Central Asian regions. Okay. For that connectivity is important for us. Unity, neighborhood, and extended neighborhood. Extended neighborhood must be united on issues, different issues. In the significance part, when where we have seen that it is a non-West grouping. Therefore, we must unite for our own issues, for our own causes, and make certain policies. Respect for sovereignty and integrity. This is the crucial point which India want to highlight being the chair of the SCO. That we are stringent upon, you know, emphasizing the sovereignty principle. Where, where China or Pakistan are hampering our sovereignty and territorial integrity. This is the way India cannot compromise upon it. Environmental protection, of course. So everything is happening through SDGs, environmental protection, secure doctrine, a very comprehensive doctrine and India is very ambitious in environmental goals also. Therefore, we want to showcase to the world that yes, India is going to be the guru of globalization. The new emerging world order is there into that wave India is going to sail. Understand few more things apart from it. That you know, Samarkand meet outcomes that happened in 2022 also. From there we have understood and India if wants to make SEO relevant, in the conclusion you can write that, if India wants to make SEO relevant, then India must focus upon three things. That is strategic autonomy, strategic autonomy should be there, you know, being part of both the camps, Eastern camp and Western camp. Strategically we can shift our gears to bridge the gaps between both the camps. This is strategic autonomy. If India wants to make SEO relevant, it needs to focus upon strategic autonomy, economic strength, economic prowess. Of course, I do understand that India is soon not going to take over China, but we should focus upon economic strength and military strength by having, you know, uh, modernization of our defense and security forces. Military strength is equally important for us. Okay. And the double peace deal into the Samarkand declaration last year, it, it has been there and it was important. Double peace deal. Double peace deal for Afghanistan. Double peace means peace inside the Afghanistan and peace outside the Afghanistan. Both the peace and India and the SEO members should be instrumental in achieving that peace for that matter. India and Russia, where they can collaborate? Because you know, a lot of sanctions have been there on the Russia. Okay, Black Sea Grain Deal, you know, Black Sea Grain Deal. Black Sea, Grain Deal, Laundermat countries, these things had been in news, Laundermat countries, the countries, because US was not ready to take oil from the Russia. What happened that Laundermat countries, the deal was brokered by, brokered by Turkey. What happened, India is also part of Laundermat countries. We were procuring oil and gas from Russia and US was procuring the same oil and gas from India and laundromat countries. 
So basically what is happening from the back hand, India can utilize this crisis as an opportunity also. Economic opportunity I am talking about. Although it's a uh, political failure at the global stage. But what happens that here, India and Russia can club together for de-dollarization. Here China will also come and part of it, become a part of it into the SEO. For the de-dollarization because you know rubble already has it has been declining and in the global markets it is not being accepted for that india and russia can club for de-dollarization rejecting economic sanctions of the united states of america and into the way forward as a conclusion it has been a cultural diplomacy a platform for cultural diplomacy for india as well by achieving the varanasi as the cultural capital of the seo so guys, thank you so much and keep working hard. We are ready to deliver the best content to you, the exhaustive mains coverage to you in the format of explaining, making the concepts, you know, so that you can understand. In the simple language, you can understand. Simple words, key words that are presented to you in a manner that you can write an answer out of it also. And the notes will be provided to you on the Telegram channel of t.me slash shunya notes 50. Subscribe to this channel and you will find the notes of these lectures very soon. Okay, so thank you and keep watching.